Hello everyone, today we're doing a video on the eternal duty of the Envoy Oracles and the Claymen. I hope you're all having a great day. I won't keep you too long, but I just wanted to say, we have now got a Discord, like I said in the last video. It'll be in the pinned comment and the description. Anyway, I won't hold you any longer. Enjoy the video. Before we start talking about the Envoy Oracles and the Claymen's eternal duty, first, I think you will need to know what the definition of Oracle is. While some of you might know, it's mostly for the people that don't know. So yeah, I'll read out the English definition. Oracle. A priest or priestess acting as a medium through whom advice or prophecy was sought from the gods in ancient times. The envoys' oracles were indeed used for a reason like this, though not exactly the same, not entirely different either. It goes more in depth into it in the envoy oracle Ashes. It states, Spirits of a monstrous band of musicians who employ sacred arts. It is said that when oracle envoys appear, playing their pipes, they do so to herald the arrival of a new god, or a new age. That is why we see them inside the Halig Tree and the capital for the Halig Tree is for Mikola and Melania, two Imperians, too soon to be gods. They might have also prophesied that Mikola might bring a new age, since that is what he was trying to do, but that part is unclear. And for the capital, why some might think it obvious to be Maraca. I don't think that's the, to the case, to be honest. I think it could either be us or Rani. Rani, because she's an Empyrean and soon to be God. And we, the tarnished player, because we, depending on our decisions, usher in multiple different ages, whether that be an age of the frenzied flame, an age of the duskborn, an age of the stars. It all depends on us, really, but we do, at the end of the day, usher in a new age. We learn more about their pipes in the Envoy's Horn item description. Well, and the Envoy's Large and Envoy Medium, they're all the same. It states, Golden Horn of the Oracle Envoys, profoundly weighty, its blows are sure to be felt. Originally an instrument, but one that cannot be sounded by a mere human, or perhaps it is too early to sound the call. Because that was cryptic, I'll explain it to you. So basically, what it's talking about is these horns. My interpretation of that is that when a new age or a new god comes, they use these horns and just blare them into the sky. Now there does seem to be a bit more to these horns, seeing that it talks about how a mere human can't touch them and how it's not time to sound the call. It sounds like there's a bit more to it than just sounding it when they know an age is coming. So maybe there's something intrinsically different with these beings and their instruments. Something different and something ancient. Another fact about the Oracle Envoys is that they are in fact bloodless. We know this by the fact that they on occasion drop a strip of white flesh. We do not know the reason why they are bloodless. Probably something to do with the fact that it's from a fantasy world and a lot of things are possible that's not in our world. But getting back on topic, there are other creatures who are bloodless but it is still very uncommon. Something that I wanted to state before I forgot to at the beginning of the video in my stupidity is the different types of oracle envoys. You have the normal oracle envoy who just has an envoy horn, the large oracle envoy who wields the envoy's long horn, and last but not least the oracle envoy giant who wields the envoy's great horn. These different oracle envoys were most likely the different ranks of the Oracle Envoys because, as we're going to talk about in a minute, they were most likely part of the same ancient civilization as the Climen. Before we go further into the video, I just want to say again, I know I say this a lot, but thank you so much. I mean, at the moment of recording this video, we've got 298 subscribers. Thank you so much. We're so close to 300 and it just blows my mind every single time. I am planning to do something special at 300, so yeah, look forward to that, I guess. It genuinely makes me super, super happy. If you are enjoying the video so far, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. If you're not, and you absolutely hate the video so far, or dislike it, then please let me know some constructive criticism so I can improve for the next one. Anyway, I've done enough rambling. Enjoy the rest of the video. Until today and yesterday, the clay men, I didn't think much of them. They were cool, yeah, cool enemies, and they used bubble sorceries. But when I looked into them, and I looked into the lore, they were so much more than that. The first bit of a hint we get is in the clay men ashes. 
the warped remains of priests who searched for revelation in service of the ancient dynasty. They employ two sorceries that produce smaller and larger bubbles. While this on its own might not be much, it's the little breadcrumb that they leave of about the two smaller and larger bubbles that hold the true answers. This ancient dynasty is so much more important than you might think. So much more important to these two species stories. Also, it tells you a bit more about who they are and what they are searching for within the bubbles. Both item descriptions for the bubbles hold the same implications. It states, producing several small magical bubbles they, that drift towards foes before they naturally pop. Charging increased the delay before the bubbles pop. The claim and search for lost oracles within their bubbles. If this wasn't enough evidence for you, there's also their attacks. These scale of sorcery and are blue bubbles, while theirs are yellow and scale of faith. They're also bubbles. I'll show you on screen now the difference, well, the lack of. So to summarise, what I think the claimant are doing is they are searching for lost envoy oracles. Obviously a long time ago, as they're all crumbled now and decaying, maybe when their ancient civilization was still prospering and thriving, they were sent out, sent out to find the lost oracles that, for whatever reason, were lost. The reason they were lost is not known, but we do know that in some capacity they were far from home. Another thing I wanted to talk about is the Envoy's Crown. It's got a very interesting item description. Thanks Fexter Life. The soft bundle worn on the head by Oracle Envoys, densely wrapped in several layers of cloth, raises the potency of bubble-based skills. No one knows what the cloth hides, but some claim to have heard a faint whimpering from inside. It must have been their imagination. Regarding this item description, I've seen a lot of things going around. Something about a kidnapped envoy inside of there, but in my opinion, my interpretation of it is, as we know, in mythology and just oracle, myth anything to do with oracles in general, there's a sort of theme that goes along with it. With seeing the future, it can also bring madness. Perhaps they're whimpering inside this helmet from the horrible things they've seen. What if they saw the frenzied flame ending. I imagine living through that and seeing a prophecy of that would be quite fear inducing. I think they're suffering from their visions because at the end of the day they are oracles and they can see the future to some degree. That about wraps it up everyone. I hope you all have had a great day. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Like I said at the beginning of the video we have started a discord server. If you did enjoy the video consider leaving it a like and subscribe and yeah I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, before I go, I just wanted to say that if you look on the screen right about now, there should be a playlist with all our previous 12 Elden Ring lore videos. So yeah, dig in. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.